Okay, so a pick a problem. This is from an old class notes, okay? So basically, if you want, you can read it. Let's see if I can zoom in. But basically, what does it say? Is a piping system transports a fluid that has an internal pressure of 1500 kilopascals. In addition to being subject to fluid pressure, the piping support a vertical load of nine kilonewtons and a horizontal load of 13 kilonewtons, as you can see on the finger on the figure. The pipe has an outside diameter D and an inside diameter D. Determine the principal stresses, the maximum shear stress, and the absolute maximum shear stress at point H and K. And on the figure below, they give you the location of point H and K. All right, so let's go. Okay, so this is the figure. So example. All right, so let's try to do always some type of figure. So I'm not very good at sketching, but I try. All right, you see, I'm not that good at all. So it looks like here. I'm just copying the figure. I mean, here they do another one. I'm not even going to try. But basically, let's say. We can say that it's simply supported over there. The origin of the reference frame is over here. They have Y. X. So this should be C. Then they have some measurements that is this pipe here is one point two meters. The height of this one zero point sixty five meters. Uh, this is point A, B, C here at the wall. Okay, then we have some forces. This here in nine kilonewton force. This here a thirteen kilonewton force. And okay, so then what else do we know? We know the pipe So let's see. Are there an outside diameter? So outside diameter is D. Inside diameter is little d, so capital D, lowercase d. So capital D is 200 millimeter, lowercase d is 176 millimeters. And there's an internal pressure. P of fifteen hundred kilopascals. 
Okay, and then we had like a second figure over here. So if this is the wall, so this is the cut over here, let's say cut. So it should be the cut over here. So maybe I shall down here the sorry, this is the cut, but let's say this will go this way. So let's see, it looks like point K. So this is Y, Z, and X. Okay, so it looks like point K is gonna be this, this location here. So the one right about the Z axis in here and that point H is gonna be right on top over here of the Y axis, so right here, over here on both sides, so right here, so it's H and K. So the question was to determine the principal stresses, maximum shear stress and the absolute maximum shear stress at point H and K. We're gonna make it a bit more simple. Determine. Principal stresses at H and K. Okay, so as you can see, this problem, if you try to solve everything at once, I mean, it can be a nightmare. So what we need to do is break it into different parts and go slowly, no? Okay. All right, so maybe let's start not by the easiest one, but the one we covered last time. Last time we covered what were the stresses on a sphere and on a cylinder, no? Okay, so over here, what type of structure would that be? Would that be a sphere or a cylinder? This will be a cylinder, no? Okay, so let's say, let's just look at um, stresses due to internal pressure P equal to 1500 kilopascals. Okay, so we look at the cylindrical. Equations we had, so for example, what do we have over here? We had, okay, let me redo a little figure here if you want. We're studying at certain point, we look at the stress in that direction over here. Okay, like if we were slicing the, the cylinder, Okay, and then we look at the stresses, like we're here at the and here, and we talk this one in that direction. So I don't remember exactly how we call them, but basically one is called the longitudinal, and the expression is given by P times R divided by two T. And the other one, maybe we we'll call it the membrane, but generally it's called the hoop stress. And that was equal to P times R divided by T. So uh, 
Which one is which? Which one would be the longitudinal? The lower one or the top one? Should be this one, no? Okay, so it should be, let's say the longitudinal. And this is, this is sometimes called the membrane, but I know in structure they call it the hoop stress. Okay, so basically in this equation, we know P, we can, we can find D by doing what? Doing the difference in the diameter, no? We can find the, the, the T and then for R, we'll see what we do. Which one do we use, the internal or the external? Or do you use one right in the middle? Okay, that's up to your design. Okay, that's your decision. All right, but let's over here. Okay. All right, so you do the calculation for the longitudinal. What was the equation? Let me just recopy this P times R divided by two T, where we know that P is 1500, so 10 to the three Pascals. T will be equal to what, so? This is the outside diameter, and this is the inside diameter. T will be equal to one half outside diameter minus inside diameter. Okay? The reason because you have the thickness on both sides, no? So you need to divide by two. Okay, and now R, so I don't know. You have the choice. You can either take the lower one or you can take the average one in the middle. But if we wanna be more, if you want pessimistic, what can we do? We can maybe just take the internal, no? That way that should give us, oh, actually it's multiplying. So which one should we take? Maybe we should take the outside, no? We'll be any more pessimistic. I and mean, whatever you want. You want to take the average? You want to take the inside? You want to take the outside? You're going to have to do the calculation. So, yeah. which one? Yeah. The average. Okay, so R will be then, uh, so one uh, will be one half of, uh, let's see. So let's do this color. We have yeah, so of D plus D. Okay, so can you please do these calculations over here and let me know? Okay, so you give me these values over here. So now we will substitute into the equation. We're gonna have the longitudinal stress equals to P times R divided by T will be equal to 1500 10 to the three times 94 10 to the minus three divided by two times 12 to the minus three. All right, so the first one will give you 58, 75 kilopascals. 
which is about one, two, three, five point eight seven five megapascals. Okay, and the equation for the group stress is PR over T. So you see right away that it's just going to be twice the longitudinal stress. So this will give us what? Multiply that value by two. And what do you get? Eleven seven to five. Eleven point seven five. Yeah, that makes sense. Megapascals. Okay. So let's do here a box with a summary. So longitudinal five point eight seven five megapascals. Oop. 11.75 megapascals. Okay, so we took care of the stresses that are due to the internal pressure. So basically what this was meaning is that Inside the tube, there is a pressure of 1500, no? Okay. Okay. So next, we need to see what's gonna happen at the cut. So at the cut, meaning where you have points H and K. So basically is at this location over here. Oops, so you see I did a mistake before on my figure. What is 1.2? 1.2 is the distance from the cut, no? Not from the end. I think I did that wrong on my figure. So let's go back. This is this 1.2 here is the distance between this point and this point, not this one over here, all right? So if you want, I'll just show you this figure again. All right. Okay, so basically this problem, can we find the value of the reactions? Mm, we wish we could, but if we don't know the distance between this point and this point, we won't be able to apply the moments, no? So basically what is this problem gonna force us to do is to do the cut over here and then just forget about this part, no? We'll just be doing the cut over here, be looking everything that will, be, that will be happening given on that side, okay? So at the cut, that will be over here. Let's see what happens at the cut. At the cut, basically, you just look at this figure over here. All right, this is the figure of the cut. They give you the value of the forces. So, if you want, we can just redo that figure. Okay, so at the cut, this is point H, this is point K. Okay, we are over here a nine kilonewtons. All right which is this one here and the 
but we have more stuff going on on that one, no? Eh? The, Fifteen point five Newton. But now we also gonna have some induced moments due to the arm of these two forces, no? At the cut. Yeah. Okay. So I started the, the the moment. So this will be the forces. So if I divide these forces. Okay, the important stuff is to get organized. And we know from the figure that we have, this is Y, Z, X, right? So for the forces, we say at the cut, forces at the cut will be on the X, will be 13, Wait, it's not 13.5, it's 13. I don't know where I came up with the 13.5. What did I put on my figure? 13, so be careful. I don't know why I make up this 13.5, it's 13. So the forces will be 13 on the X and will be negative, one, negative nine on the Y and will be zero of the Z. Okay. Now the moments at the cut. So we know the definition for moments is M equal R cross F. I like to do it this way because it's all more organized, but you don't have to do it this way. All right. So let's see, both of these forces, let me use this figure since, are located at point A. So now what I'm trying to write down is what is the position of point A with respect to the cut, yes? So let's say it will be R, where R, Will be equal to what? So let's see. The x is zero because it's on the same plane. Okay, point A from point from the cut is at minus 0.65 meters. So the y would be negative 0 0.65. And point A from the cut is located at 1.2 meters. So this is what we'll have over here. So now if I just substitute in this equation, what do we have? We we'll have M, we do the cross product, I, J, K will be what? So R is zero, negative 65. 1.2, so this will be the position vector and the forces are 13 minus nine and zero. So if we do this cross product, for this I have the result, but let's go check. How would you do the X moment will be Negative 0.65 times zero minus nine times 1.2, and there's a minus of front. So this will give you what? Nine times 1.2 is 10.8. So what will be this moment? This will be the moment about X, no? So this will create all this to bend in that direction. So if we do the figure here, this would be MX. Now the Y, remember when you do this, you have plus minus. So now we have minus zero times zero 
minus minus plus so 13 times 1.2 so 13 times 1.2 is 15.6 i have these values and this will be the moment about the y so this will be the one that will make it bend in that direct lateral deflection no okay so we do this one this one is positive this should be the m sub y And then the last one would be n sub z would be equal zero times minus nine minus 13.065. And this is a minus up front. So 13 times 0 0.65 should give you 8.45. And this should be kilonewton meters. Okay, so let's see the MX. Oh, and this will be what? This should be the one. What type of load will MZ be causing to the tube? It would be torque, no? Yep. So again, you could have done that differently. I know from statics, they make it to do that 2D, so you can do force times that distance will give you the moment in that direction, no? And then this one times this arm, 1.2 will give you the moment about the X, okay? But in order to make it methodical, I like just to substitute into the equation, okay? I think it's, it's more methodical. I'm not gonna say it's easy or not. All right, so, like we say, this 10.5 here, so MX is going to induce bending. MY is also going to induce bending. And like we say, the MZ will be creating a torque, uh, will be creating this equal to T. This one would be creating a torque or torsion, okay? Uh, torsion, so it's a to compare. Okay, so before going to do all the calculations for the stresses, Next thing we're going to do is to calculate the section properties. All right, so section. So our section again is this one, and what we have is y and x. Okay, this is our tube over here, where again we know this is the outside diameter. I think by now I don't need to do the arrow, and this is for the, the straight line, this is the inside diameter. Okay, so in this case, because this, this is symmetric, we're gonna have what? I of X will be equal to I of Y, yes? Okay, just like it was a square. 
So, and in this case, I of X equal I of Y, let's just call it I, will be equal to what? So the equation for that cross section is pi over 64, outside diameter to the fourth power minus lowercase d, which is inside diameter to the fourth power. So if we do a calculation, this is pi over 64 of 0.2 to the power four minus 0.176 to the power four. And this will give us a moment of inertia, if I didn't do any mistake, of 3.1439 10 to the minus five, or I'm gonna write this as I equal 31.439, 10 to the minus six meters to the four. I think the reason of the 10 to the minus six is to see if it cancels out with the mega mega pascals, no? Or it's, or it's going to probably going to add up more than cancel. So this I here is important to calculate what? The torsion or the bending? This one is for the bending, no? Yeah? Okay. This is the bending about the X, the bending about the Y. So this is for bending. Remember the I is for bending. All right, now we need to see what's gonna happen with the, for the torsion. So in some tables, they call it I sub P, but personally I like to call it J. And that one is pi over 32, outside the ammeter power four, inside the ammeter power four. So basically you just see that this is equal to two times the I, so this will give you that J equal to, if I didn't do any mistake, of 62.879, 10 to the minus six meters to the fourth. Okay, this should be page 120, not 12. Okay, so for now I have the values. Okay, now the next one is the one that's a little bit complicated. The next section property that we're gonna need to find the shear is the first moment of inertia Q, which we know the general expression is Y dA. And for a circle or for a tube, this is generally an equation that is kind of given to you. Otherwise it, become, it becomes a calculus problem, okay? So I will give you that. It's 112, this is approximated by 112 outside diameter cube minus inside diameter cube. So this will be 112 times 0.2 cube minus 0.176 cube. And if I didn't do the mistake, this should be Q equal to 212.352, 10 to the minus six meters to the cube. Okay, so this one, I give you already the result. Johnny, what, what is the general definition to find the Q? It was area times distance from the neutral axis, no? Okay, but here you will see that to find the area, you will have to be changing the area, no? In function of Y. So this is the final result, okay? 
Otherwise, we'll do, we have to do some calculus. Okay, so now that we have the section properties, uh, let's go. So first thing we want to do is, I do section, stresses, at point H. So I think it's easier if we go to the figure from the problem. So H is the point at the top over here. So let me do maybe a quick figure. Point H is like that one over here, right on top of the cut. From this one, let's see. What did we find? We found that we are here force of nine kilo newtons. And that we had a force in that direction of 13 kilo newtons. Then let's see if I can go to the page. We had a moment about X. So in this way here, we have MX equals to 10.8 okay, kilo newton meters. And if I have space to put all the units and M sub Y over here of 15.6. Uh, yeah, I'm getting all these values from here, okay? 10.8, 15.6, and a torque T here for MZ. Let's say this is the torque of 8.45. Okay, and this is, uh, what was this? Y, X, and Z. Okay, so let's keep that figure in mind here because otherwise, um, yeah, so let's go to the next page. Okay, so over here we use the notation, the bendings are gonna create a stress in one direction. On the X, Y, or Z. Remember when we had the bending, we had a beam, bending in that direction or that direction, the stresses were always what? What is the bending going to induce? It's inducing a normal stress, no? So what is the direction of the normal stress to the area? Z, no? Yeah, okay. The bend is create everything on the Z. So let's do turn by turn. And remember that I don't like to put signs over here. So let's first look at what would be the bending due by uh, about X. So then if we do about X, means we're gonna have MX divided by I sub X. And now since we're gonna have the same one, let me just do a little figure here. Okay, so point H is over here. Let's say this would be our neutral axis. Yeah, this is correct. So what will be the distance from here to here?
should be this the edge should is on the surface no so let's say will be outside diameter divided by two no and i will call it c because when i do the bending on the other direction it will be the same thing so times c over here Okay, so this is bending about X. Okay, that's what I put MX, I sub, I sub X. So this will give us what? MX we say was equal to 10.8, 10 to the three Newtons. C will be, if I remember the outside is 200 millimeters, so 0.2 divided by two. Divided of the I sub X, which is the same thing as the I, which is 31.439, 10 to the minus six. So, please check, but otherwise I found here that this one here is equal to approximately 34.35, megapascals okay so now now we're gonna look at what would be the other one created bending a moment. Will be now this can bend about the X, but this could also bend about the Y. No, so let me redo a figure. So this is uh, let me put a note here bending. About X. Now this could be bending. So sigma Z will be M Y. So the distance will be the same C divided by R sub Y. And this is bending about the Y axis. Uh, okay, so now if I redo this figure, I do this to help you. We have here y and x. This time the natural axis would be in what direction? Would be up down, no? Yeah, so it'd be the neutral axis. And here, I mean, I'm helping you for this, so I hope you can give me the answer quick. So what would be the stress? What should be the stress at point H? I mean, maybe I should have not put this, the C over here. Maybe see that must be that the misleading. But what should be the stress at that location? What is the definition of the neutral axis? All right. So really this C over here, maybe change it. I put it C to try to make it like here, but this should be X, no? The same thing as this one here. I call it C, but really you can call it Y distance y. So is zero because h is at the neutral axis. What is the definition of the neutral axis? That's where the normal stress is zero, no? Okay, so this should give you here zero.
okay? Because H is on the inertial axis. H on neutral axis. Okay, so and finally, now we're gonna do what is the stress due to the moment MZ, which is the torque. This one is gonna induce shear stress, no? Okay, so now due to MZ, we're gonna have here shear stress. The equation is T times R divided by J. Okay, so in this case, yes, we're gonna have the same thing. This is T times C divided by J. So if I do the substitution, numerical substitution, what do we get? So T is M of Z that we say is 8.45, 10 to the three times C is 0.2 divided by one, by two. And J, we say was equal to 62.879, 10 to the minus six. So correct me if I don't have the value correct, but that gives a shear stress of 13.44 megapascals. Okay, so let's do a little summary here of what we have. So summary point H. So we have a normal stress of 34.35 megapascals. We have a shear stress of 13.44 megapascals. We have a longitudinal stress due to the internal pressure equal to, oh, what was this value? 5.875, remember right? Yeah, 5.875 megapascals and a hook equal to 11.75 megapascals. Okay, so if I needed to sketch an element over here. Okay, so imagine the tube is over here. So, and this is one element on the top. This is point H, let's say right in the middle, this is point H over here, okay? This is the element around H. So, if here I put, so this should be positive. Here I'm gonna have sigma z, no? But what else are you gonna have? What else is going along the tube? If you look at, at the first page, which one will also be going normal to the cross section? The longitudinal stresses, okay? So basically on this figure over here, you need to add over here the Longitudinal
All right, and then you will have it here. The seminar, you have here the hoop stress, hoop stress. And then here in the middle, I don't know what color to use, maybe red, you will have here the shear. And this will be your top. Okay, all that. So the element containing point H is subjected to all those stresses. And this is just due to the moments. Now, what do we need to do? Let's see, let's see, we have the figure about the cut. What are the other forces acting over here? The forces of nine and 13, no? So this one will be creating what? So we'll be creating a shear, no? Yeah, a shear stress as well. So let's see, what would that do? Okay. So maybe we have to do another summary, which is fine. All right, so let's say summary one. So first summary. First summary for point H. Okay. All right. Okay, so now we're gonna look at shear due to Fx equal nine kilonewtons and no, so Fy equal to minus nine kilonewtons and Fx equal to 13 kilonewtons. So in this case, when we have tau equal to VQ divided by IT. Okay, so maybe let's start by first case. So if the shear force equal Vy, which is the minus nine kilonewtons. So we'll have here tau equal F of Y times Q. Maybe I should have not done the QB force, IT. And now what is the cross section? Here, figures are extremely important for the understanding. So we do this. We do this. So we know this is Y and X. So in this case, what are we looking at? What would be point H is over here and the force is going on the, okay, in that direction as well. So uh, I don't know this. So let's see, can anyone tell me what would be the shear? What is the definition of shear? In order to have shear, you need to have something to rub against, no? So if the force is in that direction, and what is the general distribution of the shear? Remember the shear, the, the shear at the top and the bottom of the cross-section would be what? Zero, no? 
because there is no other area. So this is the case where the force is going up and down. So this will be right on top of the cross section. So the shear on top or here due to this force will be zero, no? Because in this case, if you want, this Q here is zero. So basically we'll have tau shear equal to zero due to the if to this case. All right, next we're gonna do if V equal F of X, which we know is equal to 13 kilonewtons. So if you want for the understanding, let's just redo a figure. Thirteen kilonewtons. All right. So this time we have again tau equals to dq over i t. So this is equal to f x times q divided by I T. Okay, so now point H is over here, but now the force comes in that direction. So what should be the shear zero in this case? Would be zero at this end and at this end, no? But it will not be zero at the top at one edge, okay? So in that case, the Q is equal to what we calculated before. So this is gonna give us what? So tau will be equal to Fx, which is 13, 10 to the three times Q, which is what we found before to be equal to 212.352, 10 to the minus six. Okay, this is from before, divided by I, which is the same, 31, the same as uh, Ix, Iy are the same, so 31.439, 10 to the minus six, times T, that we say was equal to what? 12 millimeters, no, if I remember right, is that correct or no? Thing was 12 millimeters. So 12, 10 to the minus three. And if we do that calculation, we get that tau Oh, here we need to be careful with something. Okay, so it will give us tau equal to 7.32 megapascals. Here, good that I have here this kind of not detailed solution, but some solution because otherwise I wasn't gonna forget this. So one thing over here to remember, so we're gonna put here note. All right, or maybe we can modify this one, but we'll see. Really over here,
what is the area resisting that force? When we did this Q over here, actually I should see that one is just for one. Uh, I mean, what would be resisting that force in that direction? That area over here, which is T equal to 12, but you're also gonna have another over here, no? Yes? Yes or no? So basically you have twice the surface, no? Twice the thickness resisting the load. So really we should put over here twice the value. All right, so here we can say note, note that twice the thickness is resisting the shear force. So that at the end, what we're gonna have is tau equal 7.32 megapascals divided by two, but basically this is the same as doing what? Tau equal VQ over I times 2T. And I think this gives you a tau of Okay, I think we're just gonna do point H. Huh? I don't think we have time to do point K. Uh, so 123, okay, so let's say final summary point H. So if I just do the figure, it's easier. So if I follow the same as before, we can do the same thing over here. So I'm gonna do the same thing. So sigma z equal to 13.35, tau equal to 13.44, sigma longitudinal equal to 5.875, poop equal to 11.75. And wait, what did I do here? Oh yeah, yeah, sorry. And the last tau that we calculated is what? Was well, about 13.44 again, but that's not what we have. Is 3.66. Okay, the one we have over here. So if I use the same diagram. Over here, so we'll have over here. Sigma Z plus Sigma longitudinal. Sigma Z plus Sigma longitudinal. Here we have the hoop. And now here we're gonna have the shear. Okay. 
got this one tau star, where tau star is going to be equal to what? 13.44 plus 3.66. Okay, so can you please, guys, do the summation of these two over here? So the hook we know is 5.875, 5.875, but these two will be equal to what? The 13.35 plus 5.875. I don't know how the value. So 34.35 plus 5.875. 40.125. 40 40.25. 40 okay, 425. Thank you. Okay, so let's see we can do the the, the principal stresses. So here we do now. Principal stresses. We know the equation is sigma one, two equal to sigma X plus sigma Y divided by two plus minus sigma X minus sigma Y divided by two square plus tau square. Okay, so from here, looks like I'm not gonna have more results. So here we're gonna say where Sigma X in this notation is equal to what? Generally, what do they use for X on the book? Is the length of the beam, no? In our notation, what did we use for the length of the beam? It was the Z, no? So this is really the, so it's really the Sigma Z plus Sigma longitudinal that is equal to 40.425. The sigma y will be our hoop stress, which is equal to 5.875. And for the shear, uh, is the hoop stress 5.875, no? I'm looking at this one here. Yeah, but if you look at what you wrote. Oh. oh, okay, what is that 11.75 going from? Yeah. So let's see, let's go back then, let's double check. Um, hoop stress from the first page was, I don't know, I have so many pages here. 5.875. Your numbers on the left are correct. These ones are correct? Yeah. So this one is incorrect. So this should be 11 point. Okay. So where did I get that one then? 11.75. 11 11.75. 11 so where did I get that one from? Uh, that's the longitudinal. Uh, I guess, yeah. Yeah, I got it here. Okay, I got it. Okay, and now let me not do the mistake. So that one would be, uh, so what is this one here then? 13.44 plus 3.66. 
So it should be like three plus four, like 17. 17.1. Yeah, 17.1. And this would be 17.1. Okay, so we substitute, we get sigma one, two, equal to what? 40.425 plus 5.875. No, did I do the mistake again? This is the 11.75, no? Yeah, let me see. 11.75, so plus, Eleven point seventy five divided by two plus minus forty point four two five minus eleven point seventy five divided by two square plus seventeen point one square. We take the whole square root. So this will give you a principal stress in the one direction and principal stress on the y direction. Okay, so you did the calculation. You find that the principal on the principal one direction, the stress is 48.24 and on the second one is 3.77. Now we need to find the angle. So let's see what is the equation. I mean, the, that's the last equation I have here. Looks like I have one that is an approximation, but please check your notes because I don't think that's the one we use. Tangent two theta P. Let's look for it, okay? I don't want to. All right, so the one we used the other day, so this would be uh, xy divided by sigma xx minus sigma yy divided by two, okay? Which in our case would be what? Okay, let me go slow over here. So our tau is 17.1 divided by one half of sigma x is our sigma z, so 40.425 minus 11.75. Oops, sorry, I stopped, forgot to switch. So we have this. Somebody else? So basically the calculation, so this is sigma one, I think it makes sense, okay, it's the, it's the larger value, no? Which is what we have the larger values over here. Okay, all right, so let's say this is sigma one. So then on the figure here, we have sigma one. Sigma one, sigma two, sigma two. So it took us the whole class to do this point H, no? Now point K would be a lot faster, but I leave it to you to do us practice, okay? Well, unless you want to finish it tomorrow, but we can decide that tomorrow. All right, guys, thank you. See you tomorrow.